God in the highest. Come on, let's give God some praise on today. My God, my God. What an amazing, what an awesome God we serve. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. Oh, man, God is good. God is good. Give an honor to this wonderful pastor, this man of just great humility, great character, great humor. <laughs> I, do, I, I love it, I love it. Pastor Jonathan Bell, come on, praise the angel of this house. Amen. It's always in order to honor the angel that God has placed in his church. It's always necessary, it's also necessary rather, to honor his angel, the lady of this house as well. Really there. Praise God. These other preachers who grace the rostrum with us on this afternoon and to any other preachers that may be in the congregation as well. Amen. And to the rest of the leadership, fellowship, fellowship, stewardship, membership, discipleship, and friendship of this old ship of Zion, the St. Peter Community Church. <laughs> it's good to be here. Good to be here. I greet you with grace from God, joy from Jesus, and humility from the Holy Spirit. I stand before you with the unrelenting conviction that God's grace is sufficient and his mercy is everlasting. I have to say that, brothers and sisters, because I don't know about you, but I don't know where I would be if it were not for his grace giving me what I don't deserve and his mercy not giving me what I do deserve. Anybody here know something about the grace and mercy of God? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I tell you, that's why when we say it's good to be here, we don't just say that in a cliche way, but it's good to be here. I mean that. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bell. Man, I tell you, I met Jonathan about a, about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, and our spirits just connected right away. Right, right away, and uh, we were at a function where uh, his wife, of course, and my significant other that just blessed us <laughs> with that wonderful selection, okay, now. Uh, they, they parent uh, what I want to believe two of the most gifted, two of the most talented young ladies I know that I've ever met. Okay, and that's in Cynthia, who read the introduction, and Sydney, her daughter. Is Sydney here? All right, good. I tell you, I love seeing those young ladies just perform on stage. They dance. They, I know they do all kinds of stuff, but they're just so gifted, so talented and anointed. And I want to thank Tierra and Kamisha for bringing me and Jonathan together. Amen. 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 And now having this opportunity to be your revivalist Amen. Amen. on this Sunday afternoon. It's good to see you. So good to see so many familiar faces from the Weeping Mary Baptist Church as well. So good to see you all here. I preached there several times in years past. And uh, I preached in this Blair area quite a bit. So I want to believe I'm at home. Though I think it might be my first time at St. Peter's. Amen. But I, I feel like I'm home. I'm, I'm amongst good people. Good people. That being said, there's a word from the Lord. I'm not going to hold you any longer. Turn your into your Bible, turn your Bibles to the book of James. Or, you know, we have these devices now, so uh, download the book of James or scroll. Go go to the book of James in your Bible app. James chapter one. And a good again, Cynthia, thank you for reading that, that, that introduction. That was spur of the moment. She did not know she was gonna be doing that. Didn't she read that somewhere? I'll tell you. And I said, you ain't gotta read all of it, but you know, but she did an awesome job. Thank you, Cynthia. And T, you already know. I knew you were gonna bless the house. That was on that was on spur of the moment too. Commission said she didn't have nothing to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> But she's always ready to let the Lord use her. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tierra. James chapter 1. If it is your custom to stand, you can. Let's bow our heads, however, in a word of prayer before we get into this word. 
Most gracious God, we thank you so much for the wonderful, sweet, anointed spirit that is with us just now. And God, as we come now to hear a word from you, after giving you our offering, giving you our praise, giving you our worship through song and through prayer. Yes. We need now to hear from you, Lord. Yes, Master. You said in your word, God, that faith comes by hearing yes. and yes. hearing by the word of God. Yes. And God, we realize that in times like these, we need just a little bit more faith. Yes. Faith to make it, God. Yes. So God, let your will be done now, mm. this afternoon, and here at the St. Peter's Community Church as it is, in heaven on high. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you will just empty me now and then fill me with whatever yeah. it is that is needed during this preaching moment. Yeah. If I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm right. too low, yeah. lift me up. Yeah. If I have too much, take yeah. some from me. If I don't have enough, yeah. give me some more, God. Yeah. Just let yeah. your will be done, God. Yeah. Not for my sake, God, yeah. but for yeah. your name's sake. Let it be done now, God, that these your people might be edified and that you might be glorified. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It's in the saving and sovereign name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And every heart said amen and praise. It says, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The word of God, you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and, and temptations. For the next little while, I want to try to title this talk, I Still Have Joy. That's what I want to try to preach about. I still have joy. I'm assuming the Holy Spirit is all over this already. That's how God works. That's how God works. <laughs> I still have joy. This letter of James could be considered a how-to book on Christian living. It's all about how to become not only a reader, but most of all, a doer of God's holy word. The central theme in this letter is genuine faith will produce good works. And around this theme, James supplies his readers with sound and sensible advice on living the Christian life which leads to living a life of completeness and abundance. However, he opens this letter with a word of advice that really does not sound all that sensible. At first glance, it appears to be one of the most unbelievable paradoxes possible. He says, in essence, in the midst of your mess, uh -huh. yes, when your mess is about as messy as it can get, uh -huh. and mess is messing with you all around, uh -huh. he says to count it all joy. Yes, yes, count it all joy. Yes. James says that this, this, this joy that he's talking about has a way of countering and conquering all of the conditions in your life. And it might not make sense to you, but it means the world to God. He says, count it all joy. Now this joy, y'all, is not to be confused with being happy. 
He does not say be happy. He says count it all joy. You see, the difference between joy and happiness is that according to our modern mindsets, happiness is based on external collections. But joy is the source of an internal connection. Let me say that a little let me say that again. Happiness is based on external collections. But joy is the source of an internal connection. In other words, happiness comes from happenings. But joy comes from Jesus. To be, to be, to be happy, all we have to do is happen to collect enough stuff, collect enough cash, collect enough clothes, collect enough cars, collect enough friends and followers on Facebook, and you can be happy. And that's why many of us are always looking for someone new or something new to make us happy. But the truth is today, you cannot stack up or stash away enough stuff in order to have joy. You know what I'm saying? So the fact of the matter is, if someone happens to steal your stuff, or if something happens to destroy your collections, then your happiness may leave right along with it. But when you got joy, when you have joy, you have something that the world can't give. Come on, somebody. And the world can't take away. When you got joy, it matters not what may happen in this world, but you can keep a smile on your face, you can keep love in your heart, and you can keep praise on your lips when you got joy. I think I'm talking to some joyful people this afternoon. James says, count it all joy. Well, church, I, I believe James knew something. I, I believe he knew something. In spite of all the mess that was going on around him, that God wants us to come to know this afternoon as well. Regardless of all that we may be going through, regardless of all the mess that may be going on around us, God wants us to know these things, I believe, so that we might have life more abundantly as well and be able to remain joyful in the midst of whatever. First of all, this text tells us, church, that, that we can count it all joy because trials induce trust. All right, stay with me here. Our trials induce trust. He says, count it all joy when you fall into divers or to many different kinds of temptations or trials. Here it is, knowing that the trying of your faith. James knew that our faith, our trust in God must be tried. Yes, it must be tested. Yes, uh, his, his counterpart, St. Peter, who wrote during this same period in history, said in 1 Peter, greatly rejoice, that was chapter 1, verse 7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. All I'm trying to tell you is to have faith and to never have it tested is as ineffective and counterproductive as having no faith at all. For it are the tests and the trials we go through in life that induce, that provoke, that produce trust. What are you saying, Reverend Jackson Jr.? Trust and faith are used synonymously here. 
For you see, I think I need to serve notice on somebody today that an untried faith is an untrustworthy faith. Let me say that again. An untried faith or an untested faith is an untrustworthy faith. God will not give you faith that cannot be tested. But he'll allow you to go through some things. To go through some trials. To go through some tests. Just to see if you can trust him. Oh my God. Did, 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 did. You see, without trials and tribulations, James says we would not be able to count it all joy. But when we know that our trials induce trust, and we can be like that songwriter who said, I thank God for my mountain. Somebody know this song? I thank him for my valleys. I thank him for the trials he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve it. I would not know what faith in God can do. So through it all, come on somebody, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Oh, praise his holy name. Your trust must be tried and tested to be considered true trust at all and give you reason to have joy through whatever. Oh, praise his name. But secondly, secondly here, James says uh, to count it all joy because he knew that not only do trials induce trust, but also that perfection involves patience. All right? Stay with me here. He says the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting for nothing. Now, now, perfection, are y'all praying with me here? Perfection in this instance is not referring to flawlessness or blamelessness or faultlessness. It's not talking about being perfect in the sense of never being wrong or never having anything wrong with you. For the truth of the matter is there's something wrong with everybody in here. I hate to rain on your pious parade of pseudo-perfection, but there's something wrong with everybody in here. Everybody in here has a problem. It is for this reason that we go through problems. Because we, like life, are imperfect. But here, James is talking about perfection in the sense of completion or wholeness. Or I love how another version puts it, maturity. The goal of all believers is to become complete in life and mature in the faith. Yes. But this perfection, this completeness involves some patience. Yes. Oh, praise his name. Yes. In like manner, however, this word patience is not referring to just waiting on or waiting for. It's not like waiting in line or waiting at a traffic light for your turn to go or your turn to receive. No, this word patience is talking about perseverance. That's how the New International Version puts it. It means to endure, to persevere, to be steadfast, to continue on with cheerful expectancy. This is the patience that the psalmist talks about uh, when he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Now, unfortunately, if we be honest about it, many of us are unable to do that in these days and times. Because we have become an impatient people. We see this and we want that right away. We might lack something, but we feel that at the push of a button, the flip of a switch, the downloading of an app, or the scratch of a ticket, then we should be able to get it right away. We're impatient people. 
we don't really know how to delay gratification. No, we want it right now <laughs> and only that. And we feel that all we have to do is follow a few quick steps and whatever we're looking for can be found instantaneously. But then when we are not able to fix our situations as fast as we can find information, then we become discouraged, despaired, some even become depressed and have nothing for which to be joyful. But real perfection, completeness, is achieved by being patient, by putting in the work, by remaining steadfast, enduring the trials, doing our part, and trusting and waiting on God to do his part. That's why James said, but let patience have her perfect, her full, her complete work. So that you might be perfect, entire, complete, and wanting for nothing. Is this making any sense this afternoon? I'm just wondering, is there anybody here today who's satisfied with the Lord? And can wait on God in the midst of whatever, knowing that through the problems and by way of the pain, God is just working with you in order that he might work through you to work on something else that he has in store for you. That's how this thing works. I think Isaiah said it best when he said, they that wait upon the Lord, they that endure, they that persevere, they that are patient shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. James, James knew that in spite of all of the danger and destruction and mess that was going on around him, that if they would just be patient, that the day would come when they would receive their reward. That's why he said in that 12th verse, we didn't get down there, but he said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Does anybody love the Lord in here? So whatever you're up against, church, whatever you're dealing with, God says, just be patient. Be patient. And like Job said, when you've been tried in the fire, you'll come forth like pure gold. If you want to be complete, if you want to see the outcome you're expecting, if you want to see the fruits of your labor, if you want to reap the rewards of your hard work, be patient. Count it all to knowing that God is just working with you. He's working on you. And eventually it will come to pass. Because perfection involves patience. Oh, praise his name. Well, in the final analysis, y'all making me feel like preaching this afternoon. I, I, I see one more thing that gives us a reason to count it all joy. Not only because trials induce trust and perfection involves patience, but finally because struggle increases strength. Right? It's in here. It's in here. And what's needed most in the midst of any struggle is strength. Anybody here ever been struggling? <laughs> Somebody's struggling right now. God's got a word for you. This strength, y'all, is increased by the struggle that we endure at times. Yes. Every year, I look at it like this. Every year, we should, all, we should be able to go through more than we went through the previous year. If we go through more next year than we went through this year, then it means we must be getting stronger. <laughs> you see, if I end up going through less next year than I went through this year, then it must mean I'm getting weaker. But the stronger I get, 
the more I should be able to take. So although it might be more that I'm going through, it don't feel like more because I'm strong. Does that make sense? So listen to how James puts it in that fourth verse according to the Living Bible. I love how he paraphrases it. It says, so let it grow. Still talking about patience here. And don't, he says, and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you'll be ready for anything. Strong in character, full and complete. Woo, I tell you, your strength comes by way of a struggle. Let me further illustrate it, and I'm in my seat. If you ever took note of the flight, or the birth, rather, of a butterfly, it's not a pleasant sight to see taking place. It's not real pleasant to see that butterfly-to-be insect called a caterpillar struggling to get through and then out of its cocoon. Because, you see, at some stage... That insect uh -huh. reaches a point in the cocoon uh -huh. where if it remains there any longer, uh -huh. it's going to die. Yeah. Go ahead. And yet, the struggle out is a fight for its life. Yeah. It takes all of the strength yeah. that that little caterpillar has yeah. to emerge from that cocoon. Yeah. And if by some strange happening, uh -huh. that caterpillar comes out of the cocoon uh -huh. without the struggle that was necessary, uh -huh. then what will come to be uh -huh. is a butterfly that cannot fly. Uh -huh. These are scientific facts. Uh -huh. And the reason being is it lacks the strength to fly right. that comes right. by way of the struggle. Yeah. Good God am I. Yeah. But when that struggle yeah. is complete, yeah. when the cocoon yeah. has been broken yeah. and that butterfly has been released, yeah. what you end up with yeah. is a free, yeah. graceful, yeah. and might I add grateful yeah. butterfly in flight. Somebody here tonight, somebody here this afternoon, you're stuck in a cocoon condition. You might be wondering why you got to struggle so long. One problem after another problem. One trouble after another trouble. Maybe God, however, is just trying to take you to another level in your life and get you strong enough to fly to the heights yeah. that you've been purposed to fly to. Yeah. And so the Lord told me to tell you, stay with the struggle. Yeah. Don't try to squirm your way out too soon. Yeah. For you'll never get to where God is trying to get you to be. But let the struggle continue. Yeah. For the longer you struggle, the stronger you become. And the higher <laughs> You'll be able to fly in life. Oh, praise his name. And when you come out of that struggle, you'll know what it is then to be able to count in all joy. And then you'll be able to face and fight whatever it is in life. Knowing like Nehemiah knew that the joy of the Lord is your strength. So as I take my seat, now that we know that trials induce trust uh, and perfection involves patience uh, and struggle increases strength. Uh, I wonder is there anybody here today that can really count uh, it all short? And can you say like that old song uh, we used to sing uh, and say I still have joy after all the things I've been through. After all the pain I've suffered, yeah. after all the struggles I've had, yeah. I still have joy. Yeah. After all the stress I've been through, yeah. after all the mess I've been through, yeah. after all the heartache and the heartbreak, yeah. I still have joy. Yeah. After dealing with insensitive bosses, yeah. dealing with jealous co-workers, yeah. enemies on every hand, yeah. I still have joy when they 
worship God today is all about Jesus. Pastor Bell, Pastor Bell, somebody, somebody put it like this. They put it like this. They said joy is J O Y. Jesus on you. I see 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 Jesus on you. If Jesus is on you, give my Jesus some praise. Oh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, all he's done for me, I don't know about you, but my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. That's joy. I don't care what you're going through. Sickness might be in your body. You might be struggling. You might be hurting. But you can keep a smile on your face. You can still love your enemies. You can speak to people that you know been talking about you. Because Jesus is on you. Go and praise God for this. This God. <laughs> I have, y'all know this song of it. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. Oh.
words of an old preacher I heard. He said, ain't the Lord all right? I know he's all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Pastor Jackson, we at St. Peter, we was looking around at each other. Yes. As you gave us the scripture and you gave us the uh, theme, the, the, the sermon title. Yes. Amen. I still have joy. Yes. We looking around at each other like, yes. look at God. Yes. Amen. Good morning. That's why I don't give themes for nothing. Right. Because when God want to say it, he going to say it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. All right. Amen. Reverend uh, Cheryl Robinson's subject was Restore My Joy. Yeah. Somebody needs some joy up in here. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you leave here today with no joy in St. Peter, ain't nobody fault but you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Restore My Joy. Amen. Amen. And I still have joy. That's all right. That's, com that's confirmation. Amen. That's confirmation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have had a high time in the Lord here today. Amen. Amen. Like, like one of them old time revivals. You don't, you don't even want to take the tent down. We wish you had a three o'clock service. So somebody else can preach about Joe. Amen. 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 But we're going to take the tent down till the next time. But uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Judge Feaster in our midst. Anything you would like to say to the congregation? Thank you. Happy to be here. Amen. God bless you. And his wife, uh, Reverend Feaster. Amen. 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 Good to see you. Amen. Amen. Anything, Thank you. You like to Anything you would like to say? Uh, no, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. And I'm, I'm so glad that we came and enjoyed uh, uh, Reverend uh, Charles Jackson Jr. Amen. 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 My husband was telling me, he said, you his frat brother. <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 We've been married, slipped up in, in the house on them. Always good to see That's Along with St. John's, I started there, but they adopted me over there at my step church. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank y'all for coming through and, and fellowshipping with us. Amen. 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 Reverend Napa and the other Reverend Napa. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Any other ministers or preachers in the congregation? Amen. No. Um, Minister Jones here from Brown Chapel. Thank you for your attendance here today. And um, Baptist Holloway, all our deacons here with us. Amen. Everybody, uh, St. Peter, God bless you. Amen. I just want you to know, if you come in here next Sunday with, with a frown on your face, <laughs> oh, oh, you must not have been at the wild. Something wrong with you. Let, let's close the door with this. Come back in here and uh, try to get it. Oh, we got joy up in here. Amen. We got joy up in here. Amen. Like too short to be mad and sour. Like we just swallowed a hole in them. Amen. Unspeakable job. Full of glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to have uh, Pastor Jackson come back with his final remarks. Amen. We're going to ask you to bless the food. Amen. We got chicken. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't y'all just love Pastor Bell. I'll tell you that. I love his spirit. Love his personality. Wonderful. Stand to your feet. We don't there's nothing else to be said. Let's lead in this joyful spirit. And that, that is all God though. She talked about restore my joy. Not if it's been restored, you gotta keep it. You still still got it. Amen. From him, through him, to him are all things. To him be glory forever. 
Amen. Let us bow and prepare to be dismissed and to partake of some chicken. Amen. God, our Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for life. We thank you for liberty. And we thank you for laughter. That which is good for the soul. And now, God, as we prepare to leave each other's presence, but never your presence, and then to, to first partake of some food, we ask, God, that you will bless what has been prepared. Bless the hands that have prepared it as well, that they might continue to be a blessing through the ministry of food service. Let what is partake of, partaken of, God, fortify us and strengthen us and give us what we need to continue serving you Yes. And giving you all the glory. Yes. Bless this church, this pastor, his wonderful wife, their family. Bless all, yes. God, yes. as we continue to bless your name. Yes. And now, God, bless us and keep us. Yes. Make your face shine upon us and be gracious yes. unto us. Yes. Lift up your countenance upon us and give yes. us peace. Yes. Now and forevermore. Yes. And every heart said, amen. 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 And amen. amen. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs>